Hello and welcome to the Friday, December 2nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let's start today with an interesting vulnerability in the Quarkus Java framework. This is open source that's uh, created uh, by Red Hat and it's meant to allow you to... Um, Edit manage a uh, code in serverless environments and containers. Now, the problem here is that uh, this particular environment also listens on the loopback interface in order uh, to receive messages about the code, help you with uh, the migration of databases and the like. And the HTTP server listening on a loopback does not really use any access controls. This is something that we have seen many, many times before, most notable like in some Ethereum wallets. And the problem now is that if the developer while using Quarkus is visiting a malicious website, JavaScript on that website would be able to send a request across origin because you can always send a simple request across origin. And uh, this uh, particular web service here does not implement any protections against that. So it uh, doesn't have any uh, cross site request forgery tokens or authentication, anything like this. Uh, to prevent uh, these uh, simple uh, cross-origin requests. Like I said, common problem with uh, web servers, web services listening on loopback because developers often assume that, well, uh, nobody from the outside can connect to it. True, but uh, you can always send requests via the user's web browser. And then we got an interesting vulnerability in the FreeBSD ping utility. Maybe not interesting because of its impact, but certainly because it's one of those old things that uh, is vulnerable and also vulnerable to a somewhat common issue when it comes uh, to IP, IP options. IP options are hardly ever used or never really used and have caused problems in the past, but theoretically at least they're perfectly illegal. The problem here is that when the ping utility is parsing uh, packets that it receives, for ICMP packets, if the ICMP packet is an error message, the payload of the ICMP packet may contain the packet that caused uh, the error or should really uh, contain uh, that uh, error causing packet. Well, uh, for this packet, ping allocates 20 bytes for the IP header. so. If the IP header uh, contains options, uh, then the buffer will overflow and you have a potential here to send 40 bytes of options uh, total. Played with this a little bit earlier uh, in uh, just the free BSD, BSD system I had around here. Not happens sure if it's vulnerable. Wasn't able to trigger this vulnerability. Now, ping, the problem is because it has to sniff uh, packets on the wire, it does run with SUID root on many systems. However, in FreeBSD, it's also sandboxed, uh, which uh, limits uh, what you could potentially do with this vulnerability. And moving on to more sort of bread and butter uh, kind of vulnerabilities, uh, we got uh, updates from NVIDIA fixing 25, I think it was, vulnerabilities in its uh, video drivers. The highest uh, CVSS score here is 8.8, .8, so kind of close uh, to critical, but still uh, only high, and it's a privilege escalation of vulnerability. Video drivers are certainly a target for privilege escalation. Uh, well, they have to run with elevated privileges to interact with the hardware and like I said, just 25 vulnerabilities uh, this month. Couple privilege escalation vulnerabilities here. Don't forget to update them periodically. And Joseph Men uh, with the Washington Post recently had a story regarding a company called Trust Core Systems. Uh, this uh, company has the rare distinction of uh, being in charge of a root certificate authority that is, or I should say, was uh, trusted by most browsers. 
Well, uh, based on that investigation that basically showed that uh, there is little known about the company, they're sort of a mailbox outfit uh, without any real location or individuals really pinned to them, also has uh, some uh, links uh, to uh, military contracts and such. As a result now, Mozilla, meaning uh, Firefox and uh, Microsoft uh, with uh, Microsoft Edge are no longer trusting this certificate authority. Haven't seen anything from Google yet. I would think that Google will follow suit in the past. If anything, uh, Google has been uh, more sensitive about these certificate authority issues. And the Chromium bug tracker uh, did... uh, unseal a bug report today showing that uh, 10 different Android platform certificates have been used to sign malware. Platform certificates in Android aren't so far significant because any software signed with them has sort of the highest uh, privileges. It's essentially trusted system software. They list the 10 certificates as a part of this uh, bug report, but don't show uh, who owned them or how these certificates were lost then uh, kind of sort of indicates also that it's not really known how these certificates ended up signing malicious code well that's it for today thanks again for listening and talk to you again on monday bye